Today I'm going to straighten my FMF gnarly pipe from my YZ250. It's my favorite pipe and I just keep straightening it. You know, I'll keep running it with a dent like this. That's not too bad. But recently, turn that, you get a little more light. But recently I sustained some larger dents and it's just, it's just time. Got another event coming up this weekend and that, that one's got to go. That one actually might be affecting the way the, the bike runs. So yeah, I've straightened this a number of times. You can kind of see the places, you know, this bike is, or this pipe has sustained a lot of damage. So yeah, let's get the dents out. So here's a little image of the fixture I made a while ago. It just kind of clamps around the, the flange, kind of clamshell splits it here. And then there's another piece Another plate that has a piece of rubber glued to it, eighth inch rubber, and then you just bolt that up. You can see the bolt here, and then another bolt goes here, picks up that thread and holds it tight and makes a seal, makes a seal around the flange, and then I, I tapped in a Schrader valve right there. From what I understand, these fixtures, you may be able to buy something comparable from uh, motorcycle distributor or even Amazon so this process is dangerous um, I recommend you do it outside um, use all your protective gear this isn't necessarily safe but people have done this for decades so we know it works I usually use welding gloves but I can't find those right now and a face shield I set up this scatter shield and I hide behind it the best I can and it just gives me a little peace of mind in case something were to happen. Another thing about this procedure is that it does move your pipe around and you know depending where you heat it you know anytime you heat up metal you're gonna be moving it or you're gonna change the shape of the entire pipe you may have to do some hand straightening to get it to fit the way it was you'll have to move your hanging brackets around a little bit probably because it's not going to fit exactly the same, but you'll be able to get it to fit decent. It's just it fits a little different each time that you do this procedure Before I get started, I have one little repair to make you can see right there It's trying to split So we're gonna have to fix that otherwise it won't hold pressure And there's a there's a spot where I repaired it before where it was starting to tear Okay, so I just decided to weld the whole seam along there. It wasn't easy, a lot of carbon and oil behind there. And I realized that not everyone has the resources to be able to do that at home, but you know, find a guy to help you if you can. As I get going on this, I'll try to provide you all the tips and secrets that I've learned over decades of doing this myself and a bunch of different pipes. One thing I know is when you heat up, you work around the edge of the crease and the center kind of takes care of itself. Also, please like and subscribe to Krusty Cycle, vintage, off-road, and adventure content. Thank you. Always make sure that the area you're working on is facing up. You don't want any puddling. If you have time, hang it so it drains down. Get as much oil out of it as you can. I pump these up to about 60 to 65 PSI and the pressure builds while you're working on them. You'll end up, if you check it when the pipe's hot, you'll end up at about 90 PSI. And super important to make sure that your pipe holds pressure, that you don't have any leaks anywhere. So pump it up to about 60 and then, and then keep checking it before you start putting fire to it just to make sure you're holding pressure. Don't dwell in any spot that would allow the metal to burn through. Keep moving around a lot. If you don't have access to oxyacetylene, best practice is to swap this cylinder out with map gas. It's hotter and you're going to need it. If you're repairing a gnarly pipe, they're thicker and a little more stubborn to get the dents out, but I still 
I don't go over, I don't start at more than 60 PSI. Okay, I'm going to start with the easy one first. Go around the outside where it's creased. I'm at 60 PSI and it's holding. That's pretty round. Now I'm going to go to the top. This one's going to be a little more difficult. These little dings in the middle are harder to get out. Sometimes you just gotta leave them. That's pretty good. Kind of got a crease here I'd like to work on a little bit. And you just got to know when to say when. And there it is. There's what it's like when you split one open. Wasn't too violent though. Guess I'm gonna have to weld that up. Glad I caught that on video. And I'm glad no fire came out. Okay, I made that repair. I probably you know, might have had a little too much pressure, a little too much heat. I was at the point where I should have left well enough alone. But I just wanted that little bit more. So... I felt the wind go over the top of my head. If the fire would have come out, it would have. I'd probably be a bald guy now. So of all the videos you can watch of people doing this, the safety super freak is the guy that gets the blowout. We're down to the nitty gritty now. Down to the cosmetic part too. So I'm gonna try to not superheat this so that I can just kind of buff it out. Oh, look at that, it's coming out real nice. Okay, no one to say when, and I'm calling. Yeah, so if you want to get the burnishing off, a little WD-40 and a coarse scotch pipe pad. If you've got a really pretty pipe, get a buffing wheel and some rouge and chuck it up on a four and a half inch grinder and polish the burnishing out. Use a coarse rouge. Here's the spot that had the great big dent in it. I think it turned out pretty decent. And so there it is. There's where I straighten it out on the emblem. Just a little bit of Scotch-Brite 
Not much elbow grease at all. A little scotch bright with a little WD. Uh, there was, there's where I blew it out, where I had the blowout, and there's where the big dent was. It's like a brand new pipe. So the next question is, will this pipe still fit on the bike? Let's take a look. So per surprisingly, yes. It fits real nice, and it sits flat against the cylinder head, or against the cylinder. And down here where a YZ250 is always tight, there's a little room there. If you move it, it's not right against the frame, but really close. You can put a business card through there. And they're always tight right in here. Looks like it's rubbing, but it's actually not. The bike, this is where the really big repair was. Looks good. Then over here, the forward bracket, isolator, hanger whatever you want to call it, that's really close. And I, I didn't even loosen this part. And then over here, that's gonna be a nice made up too. So it's not gonna be under any load at all and I don't have to do any hand straightening. There it is, another beautiful repair. Please like and subscribe to Krusty Cycle.